Oh my god! Seven K Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is about Mythical Awakening School's remake, and I take everything back about her. She's actually pretty amazing. And this is the team that I was testing in a live stream yesterday. So if you guys want to see how much better she can fare, you can go check out the live stream. But this is a concise version, and this is basically matches that I ran after the live stream. Okay, the idea of this team is really to utilize Rin's incapacitation to kill off Gerard and kill off offensive teams very very quickly. And of course we have a defense drop from Dylan's here. The reason why I'm using Dylan's Fenrir and Fi is still to you know keep the offensive core of the team. Even though I'm not using a Dillo. In fact the original plan was to use a Dillo and then I would have the three I would fulfill the three offensive uh, hero criteria but I decided that you know why not just make a video that's more relatable to people because my Dillo is pretty high level. So I'm gonna use Brand and Brawn. And as you can see here, Scoot has already used both attacks. This is actually her top skill. She deals 3600% to 3 enemies and they cannot receive buffs or 3 turns. This does not overlap with Yonhi's passive by the way. And she also casts a shield to absorb 20,000 damage. Unfortunately, it won't happen due to the buff disable. Her awakened skill hits insanely hard. It's actually a, a very incredible skill if you to think about it. Deals 400% to 5 enemies, ignores 70% defense and also has 80% chance to stun all of them. And well, as you can see, the stun actually happens because many people are not resistant to stun right now. So if you run Scoot, there's a very high chance that you know she will help you and maybe get your win for you. Her bottom skill deals 500% to 3 enemies, decreased buff duration by 1 turn and also destroys weapons with her exclusive item unlock. So it's actually pretty decent. It's also, I would say, more bulk oriented because usually for a hero like her, like a magic hero, they will tend to destroy armor instead, but she destroys weapons. So this gives the magic team more bulk. And her passive is probably the most amazing thing okay, uh, that she can have. She provides formation immunity, formation change immunity, and she also increased magic type allies damage towards offensive and universal enemies. So just think about it, this can actually be used in PvE as well. Yeah, even though I, I'm not testing PvE in this video, but you can use her in guild dungeon, you can use her in raids, guild raid as well. She will very likely contribute to your damage. Okay, she also has a 40% chance to evade all attacks. Previously, there was a turn count for this, but now it's no longer the case, so she can evade for the entire battle. And she also decreases enemy's defense by 10% each turn, which is a very valuable passive, which is the same one as Sage. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see her bulk is actually very good, she's still surviving all the way to the end. And in fact, in many many battles, she is actually the almost the last one standing and I'm very surprised by that. Her weaken skill goes here, decent damage because there's only 3 enemies and she manages to stun the enemy team. Most of the time her stun really comes in very clutch. Okay, honestly, and she doesn't take too much damage and she can evade as well. So as a support magic unit, I think she has fulfilled that role because usually you want your support units to survive and she definitely can survive. And with Eve, okay, she is able to boost the damage output for all your magic type allies and they heal back, their life steal back a great amount such that, you know, they really just become very bulky and innately magic heroes also decrease physical damage taken, most of them. Okay, and with Rin, you also have increased bulk. So everything just synergizes so well. This team doesn't exactly rely on CC, unlike other types of magic teams where you have Tara and uh, Regin Leif. This one doesn't really rely on CC. It does rely more on uh, damage and bulk, I would say. Okay, so it's a different kind of magic team, but still very usable. As you can see, Scoot here, still surviving really, really well. Unfortunately, 
Yeah, this is the saddest thing. I think I could have won that battle, but it's okay. It's okay, she did her job. There have also been some cases where I've seen my Yonhi counter and hit with her basic damage uh, with 6 digits. So it's pretty amazing. And that's not with Dillo, that's with um, Brand and Braun. So yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with Scoot's remake, especially after using her in practice. And uh, Rin also hits insanely hard, thanks to Scoot. The point is to kill off death teams as soon as you can, especially Gerard's. Because Gerard is freaking annoying. And of course you have to deal with Chris, but with Skull, you can also do more damage to Chris, which is a good thing. So I think she is ready here to allow you to hit harder, to kill off the death team before they can land death on you. Okay, that's the alternative way to get around it besides using a Galidus, I feel. Of course, with this team, because I'm not actually using uh, Dillo, I m could have taken out 5 for maybe... Yeah, that, that skill also hits pretty hard. I think that's her bottom skill. Yeah, her bottom skill also hits pretty hard. Uh, I, I was saying I would take out 5 for Rosie, because this will boost magic damage a lot more, because Rosie will increase the magic attack of my units and also increase the bulk of my entire team by reducing 5 man AoE damage. So yeah, that's another alternative. But you know, Fai is just holding her own. I mean, look at that damage. <laughs> Fai is really holding her own ground and the Agnes Flame does help me in many situations as well. So I think right now you can have a very diverse team. It doesn't mean you have to stick with um, Universal and Magic, Universal and Offensive. You can even have Magic and Offensive. Yeah, who, who says you can't? You know, even though the meta prefers you to have Judas or you know some meta heroes on your team, but I think it's not exactly necessary. It's still possible to progress with a hybrid team like this. And of course, before we forget, we need to talk about Scoot's equipment. So for Scoot, I've given her crit and lethal, okay, and also HP armor. Willful Ring, Height and Purification, so that will really help her increase her bulk. She has Evasion and Height, I think that itself is probably one of the best combinations you can give her so that she can prolong herself for the first part of the battle. And then for her traits, I've given her Electrify, Silence and Death Resist. I think Death Resist is a must right now, especially if you don't run Galidus. And even if you do run Galidus, I think having Death Resist is still pretty good. I also, for her jewels, I give her survive on 1 HP, increase awakening gauge as well as crit and lethal rate increase. So this will increase her damage output overall. Her damage multipliers are actually pretty high compared to a lot of other heroes. So I would strongly suggest you can go that route. Otherwise, you can give her lethal, you know, to lower her cooldown whenever she uses her skill. For fighter soul, of course, I give her block rate increase status cast rate and of course more defensive oriented ones. This is to allow her to live longer because of her passive. Her passive is just too valuable for you not to keep her. Of course you may ask, can you use her in a 5v5 setting? And I think it's entirely possible. You can actually use her instead of Sage now. So Skull, Eve, if you don't have Eve, then you can use uh, Regenlaif or Sage. Yon, He and Rin. Okay, these are four are the core magic heroes now. And then for the last spot, you can either use Red Grid or Dylan's or Fenra, up to you. Or even Fai, you know, it's completely up to you. Or even Judas. Because all these, as long as you have the main magic team with Rin, the 4 unit magic team with Rin, then you can be sure that incapacitation will happen. And that's your purpose of having you know, Rin in the team anyway. Again here, she manages to stun the whole team and she goes on with her bottom skill. So it's actually insanely good. And she still has full health, that's the most surprising thing. <laughs> she's so many times, she's always the one at full health. She doesn't take much damage. So yeah, when paired with Eve, I think it's a very synergized uh, duo. 
Unfortunately, I get frozen here. Because my fire died super early. And luckily, I cleansed. So I could get the damage. And actually, this part was pretty scary because I was thinking I'm gonna die. My HP is pretty low. Judas is still on immortality. Galidas is not that, you know, frail. And he does have a Mr. Armor um, shield being casted. And if I get freeze here and hit again, I'm definitely gonna die. But you see that my school actually has full health, almost full health. So all these damage taken... I'm surprised it doesn't hit her too, too hard. Thankfully she crit with the Galidus and she killed the Judas and... Look at that! Look at how amazing this girl is! <laughs> I was shocked, I was gonna quit in the battle but... Wow, she really turned it around. So you really have to use her in the magic team and I think she is a great addition to the magic team now in terms of uh, raising the damage up of the entire magic team. I don't know if this can really compensate you know, for the 2000 defense increase from Gerard on the offensive team. Because 2000 defense bringing everything back to baseline is pretty significant. So you, even though you may do more damage, Mm, I'm not too sure um, whether it will be beneficial across many many battles. But one thing for sure is that you do lifesteal back a lot and that actually also kind of balances out things because magic teams now can sustain their HP very very well especially with Eve. And yeah, if you can manage to land the damage, you will kill off offensive teams very quickly as well and you are pretty much left with those uh, universal units that you have to deal with which can be pretty annoying but you know, better than not having the firepower to hit through, right? Away Again, the Awakened skill manages to stun the final two heroes. And yeah, Agnes Flame goes through. Agnes Flame, the moment Agnes Flame lands, you know, you can be sure that something is gonna happen. Something crazy will happen. Huge damage will be dealt and you will, yeah, quit. So let me know what you guys think of Scoot, especially after checking her out in the video. Because initially on paper, she didn't feel that good to me. So yeah, let me know what you think of her now. And shout out to my channel members, Nick Eclipse, ZMD Phoenix, Reggie Batista, Doppelganger. Remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much and see you.